Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Anjan Rudeja. I'm working at SD5 at Adobe. And this brings me to another masterclass on solid principles. And specifically, we'll be talking about D of solids. If you haven't seen the first four videos, then guys, first of all, do check those out. I promise after this entire series and playlist on solids, these concepts will be on your tips. No interviewer ever will be able to challenge you and question you because solid principles nahi aate. And I bet koi bhi industry se is level pe ye concepts nahi batane wala. So what are you waiting for? Jaakar zaroor dekhna sari videos and do let me know how do you find them. In case if you have any doubt understanding any concepts, please feel free to drop a message in the telegram group of Coding Decoded or you can mention them in the comments as well. Without further ado, put your hands together for the D of solids. So let's get started. Dependency inversion. This is the fifth principle of solids as you are already aware of. But I feel this should be the first one. This forms a core concept of any low level design. And if you understand this, you will always write clean and clear code. And your reviewers will be really happy that you are following this principle up. Because their work is very low if you follow a good design in the code. So let's get started as a regular process. We will first understand the definition of dependency inversion. Then we will take a real life example. And today's example is fabulous. You are going to love it up. Once we will see how it gets violated in code, we will address the problem and fix it up in that real life example. And after that, we will be walking through the code section where I'll tell you how in code it gets violated and how can you form a compliant version of DIP, Dependency Inversion Principle. After that, we will templatize this up, followed by looking at advantages of this principle. So let's get started. The definition of DIP states, High level modules should not depend on low level modules. Both should depend on abstraction on interfaces. Now, what does this mean? That high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Do you understand? Don't worry. Let's take a real life example and let's try to understand it up. So let's hypothetically assume that Coding Decoded is expanding in three cities, Delhi, Bombay and Bangalore. And it wants to set up a network system through which it can make calls. So Jio is the first preferred choice across India. So what did we do? We hired a contract with Jio and uh, it provided us with the APIs to actually make a call and it accepts two parameters. The first one is the SCD code and the second one is the number on which you want to dial. So what's going to happen? From all the three offices of Coding Decoded, uh, this API would be called and let's assume we created a class Jio, uh, make a call and it accepts an SCD code number and pretty simple and straightforward. So what we did across all these three buildings, we started injecting the geo class object and we invoked a geo class dot make call whenever there was a requirement to actually make a call. So let's consider these three different buildings as three different high level classes and wherever there is a need to make a call, what do you do? You create a new object of geo class and you invoke make call method pass in the arguments where you are actually making a call and in case you are using spring boot application this could be an auto wired singleton instance so if you are aware of spring boot then you could use an auto wired singleton instance of geo class if uh, the other case could be you can use prototype instances as i have created a new one here it was going really well however after an year or so geo themselves increase their rates to almost double. Coding Decoded could not afford such a high increase in network fare. So what comes to rescue? Airtel Bharti comes to rescue. Airtel also launched a similar plan which was way lower than what Jio proposed. And since it was lower in tariff, Coding Decoded decided to switch from Jio to Airtel. In order to use Airtel service, what do we need to do? We need to replace all those instances where Jio was getting consumed and there could be cases the make call method of Jio class is different from make call method of Airtel class. In this particular case, for the sake of simplicity, we have kept it the same. However, this point fixes is to be done across all the three concrete high level classes Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore. Instead of new Geo, what will we do? We will replace it with new Airtel and make the call to make call method. So 
now this becomes a problem whenever the service is changing the high level definition of our classes has to be altered and this is not a sustainable model in terms of databases let's assume you were using aws for a second and your service went really well however aws started seeing issues you have decided to move to aurora and in case you don't follow this principle what do you need to do across all your code you have to change and replace the instances where aws was used and you have to get it replaced with aurora this model is not sustainable in long run i myself have experienced this issue in code where in 3 or 4 years back we were using azure databases uh, there was a legacy code that was written and where in where database interactions were needed the high level code modules were invoking those low level azure classes which was absolutely incorrect and flawed and a year later we had to migrate from azure to aws because of better performance and therein we had to do a lot of refactoring in code let's see how did we refactor the code and fix this problem so let's take the same example and let's try and understand to go about how to go about the fix the first and the foremost thing that we are going to do is to build interfaces instead of concrete classes and what kind of interface will be apt for this particular case we will create an interface net named network and wherein it will have a make call helper method the parameters would be the same int std code and int number we will have two implementations of this interface the first one is airtel class that implements the network interface and the second one would be the geo class that again implements this network interface a uh, pretty simple and straightforward wherever we were using geo objects in code we have replaced them with network dot make call now we have a defined contract between our high level classes and the interface that whenever we want to make a call we will be using the interface reference and invoking make call method on that reference to understand it better let's deep dive into code first of all we'll look at the non compliant version how it creates a problem and then we will look at the compliant version so here this is a violated case for dip it has a geo class in it and it has a method named make call it accepts two parameter std code and number and it simply print outs on console making a call by geo network on this std code and number let's see the coding decoded main class it has a public static void min method for the sake of simplicity i have created a two uh, variables std code and number and what do we do in order to make a call we simply create a new instance of geo object remember geo is the main reference and it it allocates new geo object to it and we simply make a call using the make call method of geo years later we had to replace this call by airtel so what do we do we created a new class airtel it also has a make call method in it it's that simply prints out making a call by airtel network on this std code and number and instead of using geo object what do we do we use airtel objects so here i have already written those statements in order to save time so let's go ahead and run this method what do you see you see that making a call by airtel network on this code and this number so this becomes a problem why this becomes a problem because wherever in code you were using geo objects previously those have to be replaced by airtel objects and this is not a sustainable solution as i talked about in long run uh, every time you change the code low level classes it its impact will be reflected in your main high level code as well how do we address this problem let's see the compliant version now the first thing that i have done here is to create the network interface which has a make call method in it then moving ahead what do i do i again create uh, the geo class that implements the network interface and this method remains the same making a call by geo network similarly i have created another class airtel that implements the network interface again and here it 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 implements the make call method making a call by airtel network on this std code and number now let's have a look at the core coding decoded high level class it has public static void min method the same the code remains the same std code and number now let's assume we want to make a call how do we inject this dependency please kindly have a look at this particular statement network network equals to new geo 
Now let's assume you are interested in making a call by Jio network. Please pay attention to line number 12. What do you do? You write network that is acting as a reference to your interface network equals to new Jio. Whenever you want to make a call, the network interface already exposes a make call method. So network dot make call, you pass in the required arguments to it. Let's run this up. And here you will see that we have used the Jio network in order to make a call on this particular number. Let's assume that years later, we want to replace this Jio implementation with Airtel one. The contract would still remain the same. Only the reference objects gets altered. So here, instead of Jio, I have written new Airtel and let's run this up, making a call by Airtel network. With this example, we saw whenever the high level class, as in this case is coding decoded is interacting with the interface. The contract always remains the same irrespective of what or actual concrete low level class is being used as the reference. Here in this case, it was new Airtel. In the previous case, we saw it was Geo. The contract between the network and the high level class remained the same irrespective which reference, whether it was Geo or Airtel that was being used over here. So this is what DIP states that you should always communicate between classes, low level and high level by interface contracts. Now let's have a look at a generic template. How do we identify DIP violations in code? How do we address those violations and build a DIP compliant version? And finally, we'll look at the advantages that DIP compliant version provides. So here I've created a generic class A and it injects a class B object in it. Class B has a helper method feature one and it accepts integer parameters as arguments. As you can see in process, helper method of class A, we are making a call to B dot feature one passing 10 as the argument. And here you can easily identify that there is a direct linkage between A and B class. B is being injected over here as a result of which the high level module that is A in this case is directly communicating with the low level module B. This is the first problem that we identified. There is another catch as well. Writing unit test for class A will be really difficult because you, class B has a dependency on class A. You have to provide the mock implementations of class B wherever you're writing the unit test for process helper method. So whenever there is a violation of DIP, you have to provide the mock implementation of all the dependencies in your high level classes. Otherwise, unit testing is not possible. So this brings us to another reason why DIP compliant version should be followed. And how do we address this problem? Remember uh, uh, what we did in the coding section, we generated an interface and the similar thing is what we are going to do here as well. We'll be injecting the interface reference in class A instead of concrete implementation of class B and class B would be implementing this particular interface that we have just created. If you look at it carefully, then you will realize that we have decoupled the dependency of class B on class A and this is achieved using the interface object. Uh, now class A has a direct contract with the interface and class B is implementing that interface as a result of which it also has a direct contact with contract with the interface. So both these classes are in sync with the interface, whatever the interface says they will have to do. As a result of which what we can say, we can say that all injecting classes follow the same contract as mentioned in the interface. And class B also has to implement that interface. Therefore, it also abides by that contract. To summarize things up, let's have a look at the advantages of DIP. The first one would be clean code. The second one would be writing unit tests becomes really easy and convenient. The third one would be there's a defined contract with to which all the classes that are there in your code abides to. So there is nothing out of contract that would ever happen. And as a result of which, since everything is legitimate as per the contract, uh, the, you give the structure and design to your code and therefore your code becomes cleaner. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope I'm, I made sense to you and you are able to grab the entire concept of DIP and rest of the solid principles. If the answer is yes, which I hope so, do let me know in the comment section that you have understood it fully or gives a thumbs up or a plus one to it. And that will really make me happy because a lot of effort goes in making these videos. With this, let's wrap up today's session. 
आई होप यू थरली इंजॉयड इट इफ यू डिड एंड प्लीज डोंट फर्गेट टू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल थैंक्स फॉर व्यूइंग इट हैव अ ग्रेट डे हेड एंड इन केस इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर एनी असिस्टेंस फ्रॉम मी इट कुड बी आस्किंग फॉर रेफरेंस इट कुड बी क्रैकिंग एनी कोडिंग इंटरव्यू और प्रॉब्ली द स्ट्रैटेजी टू यूज टू क्रैक दो कोडिंग इंटरव्यू आप please feel free to dm in the telegram group of coding decoded we have a community with more than 2100 developers working at all top notches and we regularly discuss problems that we face in day to day activity anything that is happening in the industry like chat gtp ai ml stuff and definitely the reference so that's the go to place where we brainstorm solutions looking forward to seeing all of you there take care see ya